even though I am still quite loud anyway. <laughs> As I was taught by my choir master to use my diaphragm and to make words and that project at the back of the room, sometimes I have to remember, you don't need to use your diaphragm all the time. I'm sure Kevin will agree with that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, last time I talked um, about being chosen. And I said there was a part two to this, and this is the part two. Um, and, you know, for me, when I came to Jesus, it really did take me a little while to actually accept that I was chosen. That actually I was worth something. And that actually I am the head and not the tail. But it took a long time for me to get that up in there and in here. There's some other things that took me a good while to, um, to, to understand and to, to actually do within my life. And one of them um, was being prepared. Now, of course, most of us will say, well, we need to prepare for the second coming of Jesus. Now, I don't know about you, but it gets me extremely hyperactive. And the mere thought that I could be caught up at the air any second, even now, actually really super excites me. It might not excite some people who've got maybe like fears like Kevin has of flying, um, but uh, I absolutely am thrilled. I can't wait for that moment. I cannot wait for me to be caught up into the air, into the arms of Jesus. To me, it's just something that thrills me and excites me. Um, but with my newfound acceptance that I was chosen, I had to find myself tapping more and more into the Holy Spirit and the Word. And this both made me prepared and it gave me strength. I also needed to be prepared strong and I also needed to get to know Jesus more. Now, as a girl guide, yeah, we had a motto, be prepared. And I took this role as patrol leader. I was... Um, leader of Swallow Patrol very, very seriously because I have slight borderline OCD and anybody who's got slight borderline OCD likes things done just so and so I took this be prepared motto quite to heart and um, quite literally as well but we used to have um, night camping up at Breckenborough Hall near Louth and uh, we had these huge great big tents and they weren't like what they are nowadays. They were great big canvas things with three wooden poles and you had to make your own gadgets, your own washing like station and everything else. But, you know, Swallow Patrol was on four. But I told the guide leaders, her name was Avril, I'll never forget her, she was an absolutely fabulous woman. I told Avril that there was going to be a storm that weekend and she said, no, there's, there's no, no storm coming. I said, well, I said, I, I heard it off a weather forecaster that there was going to be a storm. Anyway, me being me, that night decided to check the guy ropes, make sure everything was in, got the girls all together and said, now come on, get your wellies upside down on the pegs, otherwise if you leave them up, they're going to be wet next morning. So everything was organised, pulled all the beds in from the side, because there were canvas tents. And when you got these type of tents, if you touched the tent when it was wet, it would come straight through, which was incredibly unpleasant in the middle of the night. Anyway... We all went down, went to sleep, and then in the middle of the night, I heard squeals from all the girls. There was a little bit of rain outside and a bit of thunder, but all I could hear was this squealing of girls, and I thought, well, such pansies, isn't it? A bit of thunder and then, you know, a bit of rain, and they're already sort of buckling and getting weak. I thought, oh, I'll stick my head out of the tent, see if they're all right. <coughs> Looked outside, it was carnage. Literally, ours was the only tent still with its pegs in the ground. All the other girls, you see, hadn't bothered doing the checking the guy ropes, checking all the other pegs, making sure they were in. They hadn't bothered. And the thing is, is that they all had to go to this hut. There was this hut at Brackenborough, which was like a, a food canteen and a food hut. And all the girls were moved in. Well, I was going back in my tent. Mine was still standing. I was quite fine about it. And the... I remember the girl guide leader Avril saying, no, no, Em, you're going to have to, all you Swallow Patrol are going to have to come in here as well. I said, we're fine. No, in you come. I was most annoyed about that, but still. Um, we got, if we got into the, into the hut, and we had to stay there the night, and literally the next day, I don't think there was a tent standing apart from mine. What have I got to say about this? Well, do you know something? 
That little bit of preparation paid dividends. It really did. And sometimes you have got to have that preparation. Are you prepared for the slim chance of that return of Jesus today? Are you prepared enough to say, I might not even get this sermon finished before we're all taken up? That's as simple as it is. None of us know. None of us know the hour. Have you at this moment given your life to Christ? Or are you umming and ahhing, wondering if you should belong to Jesus? And I don't say this for the congregation here, because I know many of you are baptised and in with the Lord, but there will be people watching on Facebook and on YouTube who may have not given their lives to Jesus. This is the time. Do not um, do not ah. Get to know him. Take his hand today and say, Jesus, today, this is the day I walk with you from now on. The other thing that I had to learn to do was to get strong and to get some strength. And through word, prayer, singing and soaking the whole of Jesus in, I believe that I'm a lot stronger person, both in my day-to-day -day walk and in my spiritual walk than I was, say, 10 to 15 years ago. In fact, I know so. I also did some practical steps. And it's funny because one of the first songs that we sang, it was saying, having about a good atmosphere around you, about the atmosphere. And I had to remove some bad air around me. And I'm not on about my dog, who does have a dodgy stomach sometimes, no. I am on about the atmosphere of who I surrounded myself with and what I did. You know, there were certain friends in my life, I loved them to pieces, but I know that they were just leading me down a wrong path. And so sometimes we have to make choices, and sometimes difficult choices. But I've not abandoned those friends completely. I've just decided to take a little side step, stay in touch, but maybe from a distance. But when I do see them, I hope that they see something different in me. I hope that they see the light of Christ so that they can say, I'll have a bit of that. I'll have a bit of what you're having. But the atmosphere in your life, it has to change. Now let me give you an example. Have you ever been in a home, say of a couple, and you've walked in and you know they've been having a jolly big row? You can cut that atmosphere, boom, with a knife. Yet when you come into a church, and you feel like a church like this, and you feel loved, and you feel an atmosphere. That's the type of atmosphere I'm talking about. There's different types of atmosphere that you walk in and that you thrive in. And I hope like from today, when you've been in this atmosphere, that you go out and that you're bold and that you're strengthened and that you feel good. That you feel as if you've been in a good atmosphere today. You know, you do need to make sure that you keep your personal atmosphere in good, healthy state. And, you know, negative atmosphere, we've got to admit in it, it's a bit draining. And it sucks the life out of you. So you've got to choose. Do you choose to be in a weak atmosphere or do you choose to be in a strengthened atmosphere? These are the words that Jesus gave me to give to the people, you, at home and here. It's time to stop being a turkey and start being an eagle. And I'll tell you why, because there's been some really interesting facts that he's given me. So stay with me on this one. In Isaiah 40, 31, it says, But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. The problem is that many people are behaving like flappy, flappy, flappy turkeys. Not the wild turkeys that can fly, but the ones that we know at Christmas. The ones that have got overweight, and it's like us, we can get overburdened, and so we're like, Flappy, flappy, flappy turkeys. Have you ever been flappy, flappy over your circumstances?
Do you feel so much weariness that you can't even get off the ground? Maybe your job has ground you down to the point of exhaustion. Or maybe you're trying to get a job and you're trying to go through all the CVs and everything else and you just don't seem to be getting anywhere but you're ground down. Maybe in your marriage, for instance, maybe you feel as if like, the enemy has managed to get some hold on your once loving relationship and you feel ground down by it. Once there was love and now there's like acrimony. You feel so pummeled and pounded down that you can barely stand. If you've got health issues and you feel, gosh, I've just got rid of that one health issue and here comes another, or maybe one's not been resolved, you feel weighed down. Maybe it's a case of not doing the flappy flappy, but maybe getting some happy happy. You sometimes need to know to be still and know that he is Lord. I understand that be still in Hebrew means to drop, to loosen, to slacken. And with this message, I believe that Jesus wants to tell us that when we relax in him, we have a confidence. We don't have to have our foot on the pedal all the time. Resting in him, having trust and confidence in him, stops the flappy, flappy and just engages the happy, happy. Now, in this next little section, I'm not about to go all David Attenborough on you. But there are a few fabulous eagle facts that may just have a link to maybe how you're feeling at the moment if you feel you need some strength. Do you know, eagles have powerful vision. They can focus long distance and with absolute precision clarity. They can even spot a rabbit three kilometers away. But what's your vision like? And I don't mean eyesight and going to spec savers. Are you always looking forward with confidence in your vision? Are your eyes on the prize of Jesus? Or are you forever looking backwards and dwelling on the past? In Joshua 1.9 it says, Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So do not be discouraged. You may feel slightly weak, but with the strength of the Lord Jesus, because he's with you, you should be given confidence and you should be feeling stronger. God has a plan for you, each one of you. And he's got a vision for you. Don't let the enemy or anything else knock you off your vision. Be like an eagle. Keep that vision on Jesus. The other fact is that eagles are determined and fearless. Do you know they can lift a goat up from the ground with their claws? A whole goat. And they're pretty weighty things. I've even heard that they can actually get like a deer as well. Now an eagle, when he's flying over and sees Mr. Goat, doesn't say, ah, do you know what, ah, that goat looks a bit too challenging for me, I'll give that a miss. Mm -hmm. No, Mr. Eagle says, I'm having that, Woof, and goes and gets it. You may feel in life that you're up against a challenge, but are you going to quit? Are you just going to give in and roll over? Or are you going to tap into Jesus within you? who says all things are possible. Isaiah 43, 2 says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flames shall not consume you. We can walk with confidence and strength with Jesus. Do you know, eagles are also great defenders, and they are fabulous in relationships. Do you know, eagles actually partner with each other, male and female, until they die. Unless one of them dies and then they will find somebody else. But they're very strong, they're a very close bond, they're a very strong unity together. And they even share the duties with the kids. Plus, another thing that they do is they build their nests up high, not just to be in canopies, but in super canopies, or on the sides of cliffs. And some of these nests are huge, and each year they go back to the same nest. 
and they build and build against it and build against it and build it a bit more. Do you know the biggest one that was ever found was in Florida and it was nine foot six wide, 20 foot deep, right? And it weighed two tons. That's at the top of a tree. Now, how many of you would go and do that at the top of a tree and think that that could hold two tons? But you see, that's eagle mentality. They don't think they, they can't do something, they just know that they can. And this is why we need this strength. We need, we've got this within us with Jesus. They've got real confidence. And to add a little bit more, do you know something? Many birds can actually do their neck 360 round, but an eagle does 180. Do you know why? Because it doesn't have the fear of attack. Nothing would be so stupid as to try and attack an eagle from behind. It's got confidence. But sometimes we go along with life and we've got so many fears, we've got so many worries, we've got so many anxieties, and all of those weigh us down when all we need is the confidence of Jesus. Having confidence in Jesus allows us not to be defenders. We don't have to have a defense. He's our strength. He's our tower of hope. Are you with your family going to stay through thick and thin? Are you going to rely on Jesus? And is your relationship with Jesus getting stronger and stronger? So much so that you know that nothing and no one can come against you? Proverbs 18.10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous man runs into it and is safe. Whilst flappy, flappy, flapping, you may want to look at the last eagle fact that I'm actually going to give you today. Do you know, you can flap and flap and flap if you're a turkey and you're not going to get off the ground, okay? But do you know with eagles, if with one flap of a wing, they can soar for hours and hours on the thermals, for hours. It's almost as if, as if an eagle says, woof, be done. That's what we need to be like. We need to be like that with Jesus. We need to take our problem to him. We need to say, woof, be done. Because the Lord is doing it for me. I know he is. And have that confidence and that strength to know that he's already onto your issue or your problem. In Psalm 62.6, now the Lord particularly wanted me to give this to somebody today. It says, he, is only, he only is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. For somebody that is going to mean something today, something I don't know you're going through in your life, you're feeling totally shook up totally shaken and you need to read and read and read and just take that scripture to your heart psalm 62 6 and you know eagles have got real energy efficiency when you come to it when you think that they only have to flap one wing and can go on the thermals for hours soaring about that's energy efficiency how are you using your energy are you flapping so much about situations that you're exhausting yourself I've been watching a documentary this last week until on Chernobyl and it's absolute, it really did bring a lot to my eyes that I would never knew about Chernobyl before and the disaster and obviously there was men trapped in there who then got the radiation poisoning and it was just the most horrific, horrific death that they experienced. <laughs> And there was one man who was in the control room and he'd obviously got radiation poisoning and he was placed into a hospital. Um, but his wife was so desperate to see her husband for the last time. And the nurse said, you can go in, but you must stay behind the plastic. Unfortunately, she was too tempted to touch his hand one last time. And through the plastic, she touched him and said, I'm carrying your child. Sadly, the man did pass away. And nine months later, the lady gave birth. Um, however, four hours after the birth, she, the baby died. And this is because the whole of the radiation, um, the baby actually took on all the radiation from the mother. 
And the doctors then said to her, I'm really sorry, but I think the chances of you ever being able to conceive again is minimal, really minimal. Just try and go through your life and, and get on with it. But when you saw the story and you saw this lady and how much courage and determination and strength she had, you could almost tell that that wasn't going to be the end of the story. She moved to Kiev and guess what? She had a little baby boy. So when sometimes people give you bad news and you feel unstrengthened, do remember that the Lord God is sovereign. He's the one who decides. He's the one who's in charge. And the more and more you tap into him, the stronger you will become. Sometimes, like this incident, life can throw us curveballs. But we need to know that we are ready and prepared for every challenge that comes our way. Are you up for it? Are you going to gain in strength? In 1 Chronicles 16, 11, it says, Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. I'm going to exaggerate that word continually. That's without ceasing, without stopping. On a personal perspective, i found that strength doesn't come from what you can do, but more about overcoming the obstacles that you thought were impossible. And I always like the expression that storms make trees take deeper roots. But where are your roots? If you build a firm foundation, have you built it on Jesus? Well, Jesus gave me another added part to this message. He said, Emily, don't just build your roots in me. He said, but just make sure that you know that no injustice that will ever come your way shall ever have power. Nothing shall shake you. I have taken that word from him. And know that no matter what people may say about me, what situations may come, I know that I'm God's child. And I'm strengthened by that word he gave me. And when you give God your weakness, he gives you in return his strength. Sometimes as well in life you feel that people are throwing rocks at you. Rocks of life, throwing them at you. Throw, throw, throw. Well, Jesus also told me, you see those rocks they throw at you, Em? He says, don't just build a foundation with them, build an empire. This is going one stage further. This is going one stage further with Jesus saying, you are in charge, Jesus. You have the control. I'm going with you, but I'm strengthened by all that you do for me. And there's a quote, another quote which I love in life as well. Make a stumble part of your dance. Now that's sometimes a hard thing to do when you've got things coming against you all the time. But I've realised as well that the minute something happens to me in life which is a negative, the minute I can actually praise and pray and sing and worship, it's like the enemy's lost his control. It's like he's lost the power. It's like I'm saying to Jesus, yeah, Jesus, we got it. We got this. Setbacks, well, what are they? They're set ups, I believe, from Jesus. Never be surprised as to what the Lord can do with a setback, because he can turn it round in a heartbeat. I hope that some of you have got some strength today from the message. And whatever you do, stop the flappy flappy. We are not turkeys, Jesus tells us. We are not turkeys, we are eagles. We are destined to soar. We are destined for good things. Keep your eyes on the prize that is Jesus. When you get something go wrong in your life, be strengthened with the word of the Lord. However you wish to do that, whether it's through music, whether it's through prayer, whether it's through reading the Bible, whether it's through church, whatever way you choose to tap into it, get your strength and run with it. And if you've not given your life to Jesus, Please do. I can only tell you from personal experience that if only I'd had what I've got now, all those years ago, life would be far less painful. Don't just say, oh, they're all them churchy type people who do the churchy type things. I won't be interested in that. We come from all walks of life. 
we all join together as a church and as a wonderful group of people. Proud I am to say that you are all my friends. I love each one of you dearly. So be strengthened this week and forevermore actually. Go get your strength up. No more flappy flappy.